Queen Elizabeth II dies, Antigua and Barbuda joins other royal realms in mourning the death of its head of state. We will cross live to London to speak with High Commissioner Karen Mayhill as the Commonwealth reacts. In other news, top-level investigation launched into murder of two Mexican nationals last night and government to introduce another gun amnesty to get illegal weapons off the streets. Those are the main stories at 7. The news in detail starts now. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us for the evening news here on ABS, Antigua's most trusted name in news. My name is Garfield Burford. Welcome. And I'm Terry Andrew. Good evening. Britain's longest serving monarch, Queen Elizabeth II, has died, aged 96. And she died at Balmoral Castle in Scotland today. That's right, Terry. Extensive coverage this evening on a story which is dominating headlines not only around the Commonwealth, but around the world as well. The Queen's doctors had expressed concern about her health and placed her under medical supervision earlier today. Well, later the news came that she had died. She served on the throne for 70 years, overseeing activities across the Commonwealth in 2022 to mark her platinum jubilee. Queen Elizabeth's death uh, has elicited a flood of tributes around the world, including here in Antigua and Barbuda, where she had been the ceremonial head of state since the country gained political independence in 1981. Well, under the country's constitutional monarchy, the British monarch serves as a ceremonial head of state represented by the Governor General. In addition to Antigua and Barbuda, the, the Queen was head of state for over a dozen other Commonwealth countries. Antigua and Barbuda has expressed desire, the desire to transition to a republic in future, which would mean replacing the British monarch as head of state with a president. For the time being, however, the nation's new head of state is King Charles III, the eldest of the Queen's four children, and therefore heir to the throne. Therefore, we'd have to get used to saying, His Majesty, and long live the King. Meanwhile, Governor General, His Excellency Sir Rodney Williams, the representative of the monarch in Antigua and Barbuda, has reacted to the Queen's passing. Sir Rodney and Lady Williams say they are deeply saddened by the passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Their Excellencies say they joined with citizens of the United Kingdom and wider Commonwealth, celebrating the life and times of the longest serving monarch and head of the Commonwealth, who reigned with dignity, loyalty, and grace. They also recall the cordial and engaging meetings with Her Majesty as she reflected on her visits to Antigua and Barbuda, as well as matters affecting the people of our Twin Island nation in whom she had a genuine interest. The Governor General's flag will be flown at half-mast during the official period of mourning in recognition of the life and distinguished service of Her Majesty. Queen Elizabeth II, you're looking now at images that we captured earlier today at Government House uh, just a short while ago showing uh, that flag, of course, uh, being flown at half-mast. Meanwhile, uh, this was the moment this afternoon uh, that the nation's flag at the office of the Prime Minister was lowered to half-mast in recognition of the Queen's passing. Prime Minister the Honourable Gaston Brown issued a media release on Thursday indicating all flags throughout the state will be flown at half mass up until the day of Her Majesty's burial. The head of government has expressed his condolences to His Majesty King Charles III and the royal family, to the British government and to the people of the United Kingdom on behalf of the people and government of Antigua and Barbuda. The Prime Minister notes that Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth reigned for seven decades, winning the respect and high regard from every corner of the world. He also says Her Majesty's leadership of the Commonwealth of Nations has been superb, joining the hands of the English-speaking states across continents and regions. He is quoted as saying, Her Majesty's life pers personified the simplest of qualities, tolerance and decency. Her ability to inspire and unite has been one of the many remarkable features of her life, which we all admire. Meanwhile, Antigua and Barbuda's High Commissioner to the United Kingdom, Her Excellency Karen Mayhill, has also reacted to the death of Queen Elizabeth II. High 
High Commissioner Mayhill is the country's top diplomat in London and has also had crucial engagements with the Commonwealth. The news of the Queen's passing has reverberated across the 54-nation grouping that the Queen headed. Well, right now we can actually head over live to London to speak with High Commissioner Karen Mayhill, who joins us live from London via Zoom. Thank you very much, uh, and thank you. Really appreciate you joining us, staying up late in London to speak with us, High Commissioner. Uh, your reactions first, please, to the death of Queen Elizabeth II. Now, we might have just uh, lost High Commissioner Mayhill joining us uh, from the UK. We'll reconnect with her in a very short while for us to be able to uh, speak. In fact, we, we can now speak with High Commissioner Mayhill. Uh, there you are. Thank you so much, uh, Karen Mayhill, for joining us. High Commissioner, your reactions, please, to the death of Her Majesty. have some problem hearing us. Right. We, we, we'll, come back to, we'll come back to the High Commissioner. Uh, we actually heard her earlier uh, when we certainly did the test for her. But of course, we'll, we'll uh, get back to uh, that, the connection there from London. Of course, we'll keep you across that story as the nation and the Commonwealth and the world reacts to the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, the longest serving monarch on the British throne, of course, been there for 70 years on the British throne. Of course, earlier this year would have celebrated her platinum uh, jubilee. We'll reconnect with High Commissioner Mayhill in a very short time. In the meantime, Terry, let's go on to another developing story because Chief of Staff in the Prime Minister's Office, Ambassador Lionel Hurst, has praised the late Queen Elizabeth. He was answering a question from ABS News during this morning's post-cabinet media briefing hours before the death of the monarch. Ambassador Hurst said the Queen endeared herself to the Commonwealth. Her Majesty started her reign when she was a very young woman and one of the things she emphasized was the unity of the Commonwealth. And I, I, I think uh, that instead of seeing the colonies go off on their own as independent countries, uh, that uh, she would continue to have a connection uh, between the colonies and, uh, and the metropole. And she succeeded. So, the, the, you know, it's the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. Uh, that's really Elizabeth's doing. Well, as we've been reporting, Antigua and Barbuda is a constitutional monarchy with the British monarch as ceremonial head of state. Ambassador Hurst says the Queen has an indelible mark on key aspects of this nation's life. I rate her highly. You know, but of course, uh, we are sovereign and independent country, although she still adorns uh, our money and uh, she's present in our parliament. And of course, those ministers who sign on to, the, um, uh, to uh, being ministers uh, must pledge allegiance to Her Majesty, her heirs and her science. Meanwhile, members of the public have reacted to the death of this country's ceremonial head of state since independence in 1981. We gauge their reactions in St. John's today. It's sad that she, she, she passed away and at the end of the day, uh, you know, we can always give thanks that, you know, because of her, a lot of things happened for us, for certain people in the Caribbean. And I know, we, you know, we all have our differences, but, hey, you know, good is good when someone did good, you know, you got to give them what they deserve, you know. And she did what she did. And a lot of us should be grateful for what, you know, we have actually got from the Queen you know, for the past couple of years, and we have our independence in the Caribbean, certain countries, so, uh, you know, it is what it is, and she's been a good woman, and, you know, God bless her soul. Well, I hope that um, the place continues to run as it is, or even better. That's all I can hope. I hope that we don't suffer, or everything just goes well, or even better, honestly, because she was a good person, I guess, to what we've been going through it, you know, we've been living through it, so I hope that he can uplift that standard for better men. Of Antigua and Barbuda, we apologize for the death of the Queen, and we will mourn for her passing. She has done well to the years, so God bless her and to the years that she do. I don't even know if I have a good reaction. No, I don't think. I don't. Really, I'm not close to it. I'm not attached to it at all because there's a lot of stuff going on here that I really can't be bothered with. You know, her past and all whatever, and I feel like. Mm, I don't even have any strong opinions on it, really, because I feel like I'm so disconnected from it. It's not really, I, I'm not, I don't see how I'm going to affect, get affected from it yet, because I'm sure like another monarchy is going to be, is going to take over right after her, so. 
Yeah, King Charles is already. You know what I mean? So it's, it's going to be the same thing. I don't feel like, you know, there's going to be any change because she passed. In Ontario, members of the public also weighed in on their expectations of the new monarch. I don't know because I don't know um, how he would, how his reign is, how, you know, his reign in terms of him being in, in the position of power is going to be. You know, I don't know. I haven't got that feel of who he is. So, you know, it's all, uh, let's see what the future holds. No, 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 there's no wrong with it. I'm mean, wrong. Someone have to cover. Now, in another area of interest, uh, we have been making, of course, uh, two Mexicans, 36-year-old uh, Cesar Santos Ramirez and a 39-year-old, and a 39-year-old was shot and killed. Of course, uh, this story is uh, referencing uh, the police are continuing their investigations into a double homicide that happened last night, pushing the country's murder count to eight so far this year. Two Mexicans, 36-year-old Cesar Santos Ramirez and a 39-year-old were shot and killed. Police had initially reported that a man was missing, but he too was later found dead. Both victims worked at the nearby Royalton Resort. A person of interest is now in police custody assisting in the top-level investigations. Our team visited the scene at the Villas in Pillar Rock on Thursday morning, and crime scene tape could be seen at the entrance of the Villas while another area further up on the property was also cordoned off. We will provide updates as the police investigations continue. So as we said, the police have a person of interest in connection with that matter. We'll keep you across it as well. The government is to shortly announce a gun amnesty in which money will be offered to those who turn in illegal firearms. Another developing story this evening. Cabinet took the decision yesterday aimed at taking illegal guns off the streets and out of the hands of criminals. Chief of Staff in the Prime Minister's Office, Ambassador Lionel Hurst, told the journalists this morning the details are being hammered out. We have agreed to begin uh, the, the process as soon as possible, uh, almost immediately, and um, I'm 100% certain that uh, we're going to see similar, the very similar kinds of uh, offerings made uh, to those who are holding illegal arms. It's a plan to keep Rastafari members out of the school. That's how Chief of Staff in the Prime Minister's Office, Ambassador Lionel Hurst, described the decision by a principal at, an, at the Adventist School to deny a five-year-old girl with locks in her hair entry. Uh, we believe that it's really a subterfuge for denying the members of the Rastafarian community an opportunity to attend uh, these schools. He says discussions on dreadlocks are oftentimes worn by those of the fate took place as far back as the 1950s. Ambassador Hurst says the issue has been settled. Certainly by 1976 and 1977, uh, that debate was over, in large part because the government announced a policy regarding uh, Rastafarians in schools and their ability uh, to enter into those schools uh, with their hair as they chose. And uh, the issue of deportment did not include any references to their hair. He says what happened on Monday is not an isolated case and says students at public schools have also been turned away for wearing locks. Ambassador Hurst says the discriminatory practice is uh, creeping back and it calls, calls it sad. He says if schools uh, don't stop the discriminatory practice, it may be passed into law. As well, a man from the Belmont area is now unconscious in hospital after reportedly hitting his head on a cement block after using illicit drugs. Well, the incident happened last night. ABS News has received information. The man began behaving erratically after using the narcotic and slammed his head into a cement block. Now, he sustained several injuries, including a fractured skull and lacerations to his forehead. The emergency medical services, EMS, rushed to the scene shortly after 8 Wednesday evening. We'll keep across the story as more details emerge. Well, Antiguan Barbuda has launched a major project to reduce and uh, ultimately eliminate cases of cervical cancer. Joy and Tong reports on the launch of the HPV pilot project at Sandals Grand Resort this morning. Cervical cancer is the second most prevalent cancer affecting women in Antigua and Barbuda, and its victims are shockingly young. Dr. Simon and his team um, published some information which shows us that
that cervical cancer was the second most common cancer being diagnosed in women here in Antigua and Barbuda. And we ate as far back as the 1980s and even again when they looked at those figures in the 2000s. Cervical cancer is caused by the human papilloma virus, which is the most common sexually transmitted infection. However, many people pass the virus through their immune system, never knowing they encountered it. When you're exposed to it, you can, if you have a healthy immune system, you can most likely clear it. But what we worry about is the persistence of HPV, and that's why we're here to try and help uh, get a screening program and an early treatment program underway. The persistent HPV strain causes cervical cancer, where it can lead to preventable death. Cervical cancer is preventable. Get your children, boys and girls, vaccinated against HPV. And again, get screened. Together, we can eliminate cervical cancer in Antigua and Barbuda. Four years ago, Dr. Tulla helped spearhead the vaccination program. Four years ago, when we launched the vaccination, uh, HPV vaccination program, it was not an easy launch. There was a lot of skepticism. The media was here and challenged Dr. Tolop, and she stood firm. Antigua and Barbuda is poised to be the region's leading nation in the prevention and treatment of this disease. Antigua and Barbuda builds the strongest public health system in the Caribbean. When I say that, people say, you're quite ambitious. Joanne Tung, ABS News. Thanks, Joanne. Now the nation learned of this extraordinary performance in this year's Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate or CSEC exams. Take a listen. The Ministry of Education announces today that the top student is she didn't do Ohebalam. She didn't do Ohebalam. D. Ohebalam is from the St. Joseph's Academy. He took 23 subjects, got 21 grade ones and two grade twos. The Ministry of Education congratulates this particular student. We congratulate his parents, who incidentally uh, are teachers. Well, his father is now retired, but his, his mother is still a teacher at the Antigua Girls High School. And we congratulate them. We congratulate his school. Artist, congratulations to him indeed. The announcement came today as the Education Ministry provided a summary of the performance of students in exams administered by the Caribbean Examinations Council, CXC. Now, this overview was provided by the Director of Education, who congratulated the students, the parents, and the teachers who faced significant odds. Lest we forget, the students upon whom we, we report today have been in the pandemic for three years. The, in March 2020, March 13, 2020, uh, the, our first case happened in Antigua. And from that until now we're just returning to some normalcy, the school system right across the board was severely impacted. And so the students that we are reporting on today would have had the worst of it. We will have a full recap of the examination results, plus reactions from the top performer and his parents, as well as his school, in subsequent newscasts. Stick around for that. Well, over 600 primary school students in the St. Paul community have received backpacks and school supplies. Shaolin Pisa reports. The ongoing initiative provides back-to-school supplies to St. Paul students annually. However, parliamentary representative for the area, Honorable E.P. Chet Green, says there's greater value this year. Given the downturn of the economy and the impact of the COVID virus and the pandemic, where a number of parents uh, have indicated the, 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 the challenges in providing for the way they would normally do. MP Green says it's a delight to assist the families, further explaining what the gesture means. It, it formed a part of a commitment to education, a commitment to community development, a commitment to our children and their development. The parliamentary representative also says plans are afoot by month's end to ensure more St. Paul students make the grade six national assessments top 100 list next year. We will be starting um, after class in grade six students in this community, Cops Cross Liberta, times two, uh, to ensure that when the, the exams come around next year, 
common entrance. We have more students from all schools making the top 100 list. Sponsored, you may say, all costs borne by yours truly, ensuring that our children are prepared. Primary schools in Liberta, Cobbs Cross, and the New Bethel Academy benefited from the initiative. Back to school packages will be distributed to four preschools Friday. Cheryl Inbeza reporting for ABS News. Thanks so much, Cheryl. And our students from the St. Paul community who attend the schools outside of the community, well, we'll tell you about that in a short while. Let's give you more information as well because they also received uh, back to school supplies as well. You know, our six students who recently returned to the country after completing an eight week agriculture program in Barbados, while the training focused on diversified vegetables, meat, and fish for the local market. I study more because Toledo Nelson, a St. Mary's secondary school student, says the trip helped him to become more social and says he's interested in becoming a chef with a farm-to-table restaurant. The Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture, AICA, and the Ministries of Education and Agriculture collaborated for the effort that saw candidates participate in the Caribbean Vocational Qualification Program, that's the CVQ. This is the third set of candidates from Antigua and Barbuda to participate in the youth farm program. They were accompanied by two teachers. Well, let's take you back now to the, our top story, of course, more on our top story, because, of course, the nation and the world continuing to react to the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. The 96-year-old monarch died today at Balmoral Castle in Scotland. After, being, after ailing for some time, in fact, her doctors had indicated earlier today that they were concerned about her health. Her, about her health. A few hours later, the announcement came from Buckingham Palace that Queen Elizabeth II, who came to the throne in 1952, spent seven decades on the throne, would have seen immense social change around the world, would have lived through the Cold War and saw it end, would have lived through pretty much on the cusp of the Fourth Industrial Revolution, passed away peacefully at Balmoral Castle. So, we've been talking a lot about King Charles III, of course, the heir to the throne. He's become uh, the king, King Charles III. He's now the new head of state of Antigua and Barbuda and 13 other Commonwealth countries. The BBC says, at the moment the queen died, the throne passed immediately and without ceremony to the heir, Charles, the former Prince of Wales. The first decision of the new king's reign was to determine how he will be referred to. And the confirmation came this afternoon. He will be referred to as King Charles III. He could have chosen from any of his four names, Charles, Philip, Arthur, George. He chose Charles III. There will also be a new title for Charles' wife, whose full title will be Queen Consort. Consort is a term used for the spouse of the monarch. Charles will officially be proclaimed king on Saturday. This happens at St. James's Palace in London in front of a ceremonial body known as the Accession Council. Much more, of course, on this. We'll keep you across the developments as they continue to unfold the lying in state of his mother, Queen Elizabeth II, his own accession formally in terms of the proclamation as king. But, of course, he would have uh, already uh, become king immediately on the death of his mother today. That's our top story, of course. We'll keep you across them. When we come back from this break, we'll take you to more of the national stories that we're following this evening, including this one. Pregnant woman rushed to hospital following frightening crash on the Fries Hill Road. I'll tell you about that. And later on, we investigate how farmers are staying alert this hurricane season. We apologize for the fact that we were not able to establish that connection with uh, High Commissioner Karen McHill. We'll, of course, speak with her in subsequent newscasts to react to the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Stay with us much more. At Najico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like your boat when you're at sea and you get away from everything. Your home and the security of your daughter's things. And the car that you've had for too long. But after all these years, you just can't let go. At Nagico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything.
Hetty Dental Clinic offers you reasonable prices and the best dental job. Among the services provided by Hadi Dental Clinic are oral examinations, digital oral x-rays, whitening and fluoride treatment, digital panoramic x-rays, root canal treatment, wisdom tooth surgical extractions, cosmetic dentistry, crowns and bridges, dentures all kind full and partial, penis extractions, children's dentistry, dental implants and much, much more. Open Monday to Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And on Saturdays from 8.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Telephone number 562-7878. See Hablo Espanol. Private parking is also available. Find it. Try it. Paint it. Love it. Find it. Try it. Paint it. Love it. Find it. Try it, paint it, love it. Find it, try it, paint it, love it. Find it, try it, paint it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Visit Sherwin-Williams Antigua on Utility Drive, Casana Gardens, or call 562-9450 for your next paint project today. Thank you so much for staying with us here in tune with the ABS Evening News. A woman who is five months pregnant was taken to Celeste Bird Medical Center by the Emergency Medical Services Wednesday night after being involved in a vehicular crash on Friars Hill Road. We'll take a look at these very frightening pictures. The car was uh, driving, the car she was driving was hit by another vehicle as she was turning onto the southbound lane of the thoroughfare. She did not appear to have been seriously injured, but was whisked away to hospital as a precautionary measure. She told first responders the vehicle which slammed into her car was speeding from north to south. The vehicle happened, or the incident happened about 10.20 p.m. in what has been a busy, in what was a busy night for the EMS, with its ambulances responding to several incidents over a two-hour period last night. Well, this is also the latest crash on the freshly resurfaced Friars Hill Road. On Sunday, as we've been reporting, an 85-year-old York's resident was fatally struck by a car about 3.20 a.m. Terry? In another story, Cabinet says it will investigate claims of a suspicious voters' registration trend in St. Peter's constituency. The executive body says scrutineers have pointed to an unusually high number of electors who are transferring their registration into the St. Peter constituency. Cabinet says it will launch an investigation and the Antiguan Barbuda Labour Party candidate will prosecute claims and objections of anyone who has untruthfully and unlawfully transferred their registration to St. Peter while remaining resident in another. Well, the agriculture sector is one of the most vulnerable sectors to the impact of severe weather during the hurricane season, and now we're pretty much at the peak of the season, aren't we? No surprise then that the message from the Ministry of Agriculture to farmers has always been to be prepared for any eventuality. So this evening, in the continuing ABS News feature, Stay Alert, we focus on the agriculture sector. Farmers across the country are being told to be on their guard as the hurricane season enters its peak period. It is especially crucial as natural disasters often disrupt livelihoods and threaten food security. We caught up with Neil Gomes, a farmer for over 25 years, to see what he has been doing to stay alert. Essentially because of the season that we're now in, hurricane season, um, I am not doing much in terms of planting because, as you know, we don't know what the weather would hold. But um, in terms of sustainability, I do have a minimal uh, crops in the ground as we speak, but um, I usually try to wait until after the season. That is anywhere end of September, October, just when it kind of cools down to really do ramp up the planting. If it's a wind hurricane, there's much that we can do, except that some persons do like what I'm doing, not plant, that vast amount at this particular time hoping that it would pan out and then after you'd ramp it up some persons take the chance and they actually um plant a big big fields they plant big fields expecting that uh, hoping that nothing happens um additionally then the flip side of it is there are times when it doesn't bring a lot of um wind but it brings a lot of water 
uh, and the flash flooding and so on. How do we cope with that? Um, I think we cope with that by having our drains and contours set in, a, in particular ways at this time of the year so that if in the event there is that type, the flood type, that uh, it would minimize the damage that is, 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 is set. Gomes says a checklist on his inventory is a priority at this time of the year. We we'll try to do checks um, with my catchment system to make sure that the waterway is cleared so that in case a storm or a hurricane comes and I have we get water instead of wind that I could capitalize on, on, on that. Um, also I do things like making sure that um, I have an inventory of what chemicals etc that I have so that in the event that there's a wind a storm um, I can know well look this is what I had this is what is remaining so I can know exactly where I am. Seasoned farmers have all been practicing these measures over the years. Extension officer in the Ministry of Agriculture, Oalabi Elabanjo, says the officials in Agriculture and the Disaster Committee have met and agreed on points and principles as they do on a yearly basis. Other than securing farming equipment and taking inventory, Elabanjo says the Ministry has also been recording data to assist farmers in the event of the passage of a tropical storm or hurricane. The extension division too, we already given instruction to our staffs in the field to start updating by getting information as to what is on the ground right now. What are people planting? What is there to be harvested? What is their age? What type of crop available on the ground? So that in case we have storm and we have to do um, what they call it, disaster analysis or record for the government in terms of assistance to this farmer so that we too already know what is on the ground, what is available before the storm, and then we can subtract what is damaged from what we know was on the ground. Then we can quantify with dollar and cents as to how much damage or what is expected that government or any international donor agency like FAO, you can all the rest UN could assist our farmers with. Combs makes clear in times of disasters, the ministry has been able to help farmers. In times past, um, what I do like is that whatever the ministry, and I say the ministry, um, have been very supportive, especially after the storm. Um, whoever government there is at the time would seek to procure inputs at low cost and hopefully in timely manners. In times past, it has, been, it has worked. So um, I hope that the ministry in and of itself would be in a position to, to assist us also in the event that such an ordeal happens. Elabanjo explains everyone in agriculture should stay on their guard. Because of the season and the period that we have, including backyard farmers, everybody in the different sector of agriculture, be livestock, be uh, food trees, grower, be chicken, poultry, anything you are doing in agriculture, be prepared. We still have about two, three months left into the season. We continue to put our prayers to God Almighty. We don't mind the heavy rain because we need all our ponds and dams to be filled. But let us be prepared. We urge you, of course, to stay alert, and we'll continue to help you to do that. Another Stay Alert feature comes up on next Monday. We'll come back from this break. We'll take you to news overseas. Of course, no surprises for what's dominating the international headlines. First in the region, we'll tell you about how leaders across the region are reacting to the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, Britain's longest-serving monarch. And on the heels of Queen Elizabeth II's death, people gathered outside Buckingham Palace in droves. Tell you more about those stories when we come back right here on the ABS Evening.